Yeah, okay, I'm not done with Trooper Paul yet. Or Trooper Dunning-Kruger, as we've come to know him, affectionately. So, remember how Baker did this little whiteboard demonstration for us? Well, there's a 3D graphic design artist called Asget Industries, who has also attempted to describe the 10-second diagram provided by Trooper Paul. And I'm only going to play 10 seconds of a two-minute clip because I want you to go over there and show the girls some love. Leave your DNA on the like button and subscribe to her channel. Anyway, the problem with Trooper Dunning-Kruger's diagram and illustration is that, as Baker points out, there's a jeep in the way. Or, depending on whose testimony you believe, there's at least an F-150 in the way. And even if you believe the F-150 had already left by the time the SUV was backing up the way Trooper Dunning-Kruger says, there's still a jeep in the way. Matt McCabe testified. And your testimony is that that jeep remained parked in front of the Albert House, uh, just to the left of the driveway as you faced the house, until Brian Hingott's finally left and drove it away at the end of the night, correct? That's my recollection, was his Jeep was out in front of the mailbox. If you could, yeah, please. The Jeep was right there. From the edge of the driveway, right there. I believe it was a two-door Jeep. Okay, it, it looks like a part of the Jeep would have been blocking the driveway? Nope. nope. Where the mailbox is, the Jeep was right there. Okay. It was not blocking the driveway. The mailbox that's uh, spotlighted there, would that have been where the back of the Jeep was? Yeah, the back would have been right in the vicinity of, the, of uh, the edge of the driveway in the mailbox. I see. So it wasn't blocking the driveway at all when you saw it? No. Uh, and it was facing to the left as we look at Exhibit 66, correct? Facing, oh, heading to the left of the house, correct. Jen McCabe testified. I want to ask uh, a question about Mr. Higgins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on Friday that you saw his vehicle when you got to the scene, correct? Yes. And you said that it was pulled up a little bit in front of the mailbox, correct? Yes. This would be the front door, correct? Yes. And where's the mailbox? If you can point, uh, point to it with the laser pointer. Okay, so you're pointing to a, an area just in front of a car that's in the driveway, correct? Yes. And then the driveway's to the right? Yes. And then along this line is the front uh, lawn area and property line of 34 Fairways, correct? Yes. You indicated that that Jeep was just a little bit in front of the mailbox, meaning About there, correct? Yes. And the rear end of that Jeep would be a butting, a butting up against the driveway. Yes. Higgins himself testified. But I'm going to ask you one sort of one final time so that it's completely clear. Exactly where was your Jeep in front of that house? By the mailbox. Okay. Okay. Where was your Jeep in relation to that mailbox? So the back end of the Jeep, the rear, would have been about around equal with the uh, mailbox, and I was not blocking the driveway. Okay, so you would have been a thousand there, right? How? How? If the, the right edge of that highlight is the mailbox, the mailbox came right there, you would have been about right there on the street, correct? Well, that would have been the front of the Jeep. We, we a laser pointer is, it would be the front. Okay, so you're, the front of the Jeep is facing the flagpole. Towards Chapman Street, correct. And the rear of the Jeep was basically even with the mailbox strut or stanchion. It, it, it was definitely past um, the driveway, yes. And then Ryan Nagel and his crew testified. You pulled up to Fairview and stopped relatively close to the driveway, as you've indicated to the jurors, correct? Correct, sir. And your car was as much as three car lengths behind that SUV. Do you recall that? Uh, when we arrived? Yes. I would say car, car length and a half at the time. Oh. Probably at the end, by the time we left, it was about three car lengths. Okay, fair enough. 
you've already indicated, but I want to make sure I'm clear about this. Did any car pull in between Ricky's truck and the SUV when you were sitting behind the SUV? No, sir. You didn't see a Jeep? Uh, no, sir. With a big old snow plow on the front of it? No, sir, I did not. That car was never between your car and the SUV, was it? I never saw any other vehicle in between us. All right, fair enough. So, if you believe the Nagel crew, then the McCabe's and Higgins must be liars. Or if you believe McCabe's and Higgins, then the Nagel crew must be lying. Or their timelines are all wrong. And who is it that proves the McCabe's and Higgins timeline is wrong? You guessed it, Lucky. And this is a microdot demonstration of what Lucky would have been able to see on the night. And contrary to what Trooper Guarino said, there is actually evidence to back Lucky up. Uh, if you got there at 2.15, what time do you think you were on the road by in Franken truck? I was on Cedar Crest about 2.30, 2.35. And when you made that first pass by that residence at 2.45 in the morning, sir, with your headlights on, what, if anything, did you see on the front lawn in the area of the flagpole? I saw nothing. Uh, what time was it, your, to your best estimate, in terms of when you would have approached Fairview and Cedar Crest again? 3.15 to 3.30. All right. How long did it take you before you came back to that area to plow again? About three hours. Do you recall about what time it was that you uh, wound up back on Fairview? Uh, I, I don't honestly recall what specific time. Sure. Um, um, approximately, if it was 3.15 to 3.30, that second time, how, uh, what would be your best estimate of the time when you came back? Uh, I would say, I, if I had to say, it would have been 5.30 up Fairview. Okay. And came, came back down, and then at that point, I wasn't able to come uh, go further in carriage lane. Okay, and um, when you say that you went up Fairview and came back down, you initially went from which side of Fairview? Right side. Um, what would that be, the right side? I'm sorry. Uh, would it be the Cedar Crest side or the... It would have been Cedar Crest side. Right, coming from C Cedar Crest, and, and then you went up Fairview, came back down? Came back down. As I'm going up, I am actually seeing uh, first responders. And at that point, as I'm coming back down, the road's blocked at that point. Okay. I'll put a link in the description for the transcript of the interview between Lucky and Sergeant Bukarnik, if you want to read it. Anyway, what we find on cross is that Lally needs the McCabe's and Higgins' testimony to match Lucky's testimony and put that Jeep on Fairview Road and not the forward edge. Now, you also indicated to them at that time that you went past Fairview at approximately 12 a.m. and 2 a.m., correct? I, I never did 12, but it was definitely 2.30. So 240, that 235. Report, that would be inaccurate as well, correct? Yes. Sustained, and only one person can talk at a time. I apologize. I'm sorry, sir. Please continue and finish your answer. I, I didn't hear the question. Okay. Well, let me ask it again. So as far as um, if that was contained within a report regarding that conversation in May of 2023, that you went past Fairview Road or went down Fairview Road at 12 a.m. and 2 a.m., that would not be accurate, correct? Objection. Okay. Sustained, ask it differently. Did you go down Fairview Road at 12 a.m. and 2 a.m.? No. If that were contained in a report of your conversation you had in May of 2023, would that be accurate? Objection. Sustained, ask it differently, Mr. Lally. <clears throat> now, as far as that conversation that you had in May of 2023, did you tell those individuals that you saw the vehicle around 1.30 or 2 in the morning? Again, I don't remember ever saying that. Is that accurate as far as whether or not you told them that? Again, I don't remember saying that. 
Did you see a vehicle around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning? I wasn't on the road at 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Correct. Now, do you also recall telling uh, those individuals uh, that uh, Fairview Road was blocked off by cruisers at about 3 or 3.30 in the morning? Again, that would have been incorrect. Oh, my God, Lally. You entered the dash cam into evidence, you freaking psycho. Dude's all over the shop like a kleptomaniac. If he discredits Lucky's testimony and puts the Jeep where the McCabe's and Higgins said, then that discredits Trooper Dunning Kruger's accident reconstruction, which didn't really have much credit to begin with, because the SUV would have had to have hit the Jeep. So now we have to go and find out what time Higgy said he left the party. Now, when you left from the residence, uh, and again, you're not sure what time that was? Between 12.30 and 1 o'clock. And do you recall who amongst the group was still at the house at the time you left? I think I was probably the first person to leave. Interestingly, Lally doesn't try to nail him down on time, and since his phone is destroyed, nobody can nail him down on a time. But we do have the Nagel crew pulling in behind Karen Reed, and none of them saw the Jeep. What he did say, though, was that he arrived at the same time as the Alberts. So you wouldn't have gotten to the house if you left Waterfall at 11.58. You have to get out to your car, get in your car, start it up, drive home, wait for Brian Higgins to move his Jeep, park your car, then get into the house. That's a fair assessment of the, the mechanism of you getting home that night, correct? Yes. Um, you wouldn't have gotten into the house until, what, 12.15? Maybe 15 minutes for all that? I would put it more, maybe 10 past 12. Okay, uh, 12, 10 or so? Uh, that, would just be a, that would just be a guess. <laughs> so it could have been 12, 15. Yeah, and it could have been 12, 07. That's very specific. Who was inside the house when you walked in? Uh, my nephew, Colin, my son, Brian, and then he had two friends, female friends. I believe it's uh, Sarah and Julie. So 12, 07 to be precise because, of course, everyone else testified that Colin had left by 10 past 12, so he has to slip in an extra three minutes to cover for Colin. And I might point out that his phone is also destroyed, so he can't be nailed down on a time either. Oh, what a tangle web we weave. So the only times that anybody, including the jury, can actually be sure of are John's and Karen's phone data, both of which were in the possession of, you guessed it, Trooper Proctor. So what about you? How would you nail down whether or not the Jeep was actually there when the SUV was said to have been backing up? 